Jesus made it very clear to us. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean? Basically means to have a change of mind. God wants you to change your mind and look towards him. Look to your heavenly father. Many of us don't have good relationships. And the Father is calling us. He's calling us to get it right with Him. He's calling us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And what does that mean? That means that the gospel will be preached amongst the nations. That the people will hear. The Bible says Christ is coming soon. And the one thing about Christ is there's no red or blue thing. He's not being hired. He's returning as King. King Jesus. No election. Just the King. The kingship. And when Christ sets things into motion, He's looking for two types of people. Those that are born again of water and spirit. And those that have rejected Him. If you rejected Him, what that means is that you reject that relationship. Christ doesn't want religion. He wants relationship. Relationship with your Heavenly Father. You have an opportunity. An opportunity to get right with the Lord. Last time we were here, some people said, well, it seems like there's a lot of lukewarm Christians. There's a lot of lukewarms. You don't even know what that really means. Jesus said, you are not hot nor cold, but you're lukewarm, meaning in you lived a life of compromise. And Christ has called us out of darkness, not for us to stay in that darkness. He said, I save you from your sin, not for you to stay in your sin. So you have an opportunity to get right with him, to get right with your heavenly father. Jesus is calling us back. He's calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to God. No one can go to the Father without going through Him. It's a beautiful thing that the Lord Jesus has done for us. He get us right. Even when we reject this good news, you're going to hear, the Bible says, every knee shall, shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the thing is, is that you don't want to wait till he returns because then it's going to be too late. You want to make the decision right now, right now, to have a change of mind. Repent does not mean just ask for forgiveness. Christ is saying, I want you to turn away from your old. Turn away from your sins and turn to God. Hallelujah. And Christ is not giving an option God says he's demanding that all men repent and turn away. Not just feel sorry for your sins, but actually say, you know what? I want to do it God's way, not my own way. That's where it started in the beginning. Was choosing our way instead of God's way. We think, we think we're just born here. <laughs> we think we're just born here and we just kill each other. God is like, no, that's not the intentions. He wants us to be here to enjoy creation with him. But the reality is we became in love with the creation rather than the creator. We started worshiping idols. We started worshiping our bank accounts. We were worshiping our cars, worshiping our possessions. And be careful, your possessions will possess you. And Christ is master, Christ is Lord. He's king of all. And some people say, well, why don't you go to church and do that? Well, it's because you don't understand what the church is. The church is the born again believers called out. He said, you go to church. How about not just go to something, be something, be the church, be the body of Christ, the family of God. And so God is setting something into motion here. He wants us to stand out. He said that you are light, that you are a city on a hill. Prayer, you need prayer. No, I'm all right, thank you. You love Jesus? All right, okay, serve him. 
When you love Jesus, you actually obey Jesus as well. Because he can't just be Savior. That's Lord. Somebody give them a flyer. Women, come on. If you see a lady, a sister, come on. Be careful. No one has a form? Yeah, if you have a form. And so Christ is setting things into motion. It boils down to this. Just like a one-way street. There's only one way. <laughs> and that one way is Christ Jesus. And yes, it's the one of the most offensive statements ever. But Christ didn't die on accident. He gave up his life. He wasn't murdered. He said, I, I give up my life for the ransom of many. See, the reality is we've all sinned. We've all fallen short to the glory of God. We've broken God's laws. And it's like we're going to court. And many of us like to follow the rules. <laughs> Some of us do. But it's like literally getting a speeding ticket. Or breaking the law. That's what sin is. It's breaking God's laws. But we like to stand before the judge and say, Judge, don't judge me for the things that I did. Judge me for the great things. Don't worry about the speeding ticket. Don't worry about the infraction. And God is saying, I have to be a just judge. I'm going to deal with your sin. He's saying, I'm paying you for living a life in total rebellion. You loved your sin more than you loved God. And all he's saying is that I loved you so much that I'm going to take the death penalty. You deserve death. And Christ never deserved death. He overcame sin and death so that he can save us from our sins, not for us to stay in them. He's given us liberation. See, we want Savior Jesus, and God is saying, I'm also Lord. I'm not just your Savior. I'm Lord, Lord and Savior. Let him be both. Because the reality is every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're going to find out. And we're trying to tell people, don't find out the hard way because it's going to be too late. Just make the decision now. Yes, He'll work with you right where you're at. That's what he does. The Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has its own worries. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. That means everything that God deems is right. He's saying, stop looking. Do you guys know that self-centeredness is a prison? Our actions are inactions. We think that this world was created for us just to enjoy and use up. But the reality is we can't bring anything into this world and we can't bring nothing out of it. As the old adage says, the scriptures say, naked I come in, naked I leave. So all the things that you're acquiring right now, your 401k, your accounts, all your aspirations. They're not going to follow you to the grave. You have one opportunity. Christ is saying everything you see right now is temporary, but everything that's unseen is eternal, which means it's going to last forever. And he's saying now you need to focus and operate in faith. Faith. Faith is the only way that we please God. And the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, meaning in the way that God desires relationship is to have a steadfastness, a trust and obedience to him. That's not just saying that you believe God with your mind, but the reality is you're saying, God, I'm giving my heart to you. I'm giving my ways to you. I know you just didn't create this planet on accident, that everything is with design, it's with purpose. You see the building, you know there's a builder. You see a painting, you know there's a painter. You see creation itself, you know there's a creator. Time and space, and matter. Outside of that is what? The first cause. So God is setting something into motion for us. He's telling us right now, repent. And people always ask the question, what's the purpose of life? What's the purpose of life? Some people say, oh, the purpose of life is to get drunk, get high, enjoy, pleasure, pleasure. Do you really think your God just left you here? And he just walked away. He said, I'm just going to just create the world. You just sit here. You guys just figure it out. I'll come back. 
a few millennia. No, you're not here by accident. God has set things into motion for purpose. In fact, he says in his word, he said, before I created you, who did the creating? God did. He said, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I created you in your mother's womb. So then where were you before you were in that shell called the human body? I was just a zygote. I was just a clump of cells. You're still just a clump of cells, but you're something more than just that. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. There's still, it's mind-boggling evidence that they see about the intricacies of the human eye, of the DNA code. It's beyond the books written in this world. God is both the author and finisher of faith. He is the creator. What you would call the higher power, he is the highest power, the most high God, Yahweh, Elohim. Christ Jesus. The Bible says he is the hope, he is the wisdom, the power and wisdom of God. Christ has created the seen and unseen. And guess what? There is an unseen. There are unseen forces. People say, the devil made me do it. Maybe he did, but you allowed it. And there is a real evil one. Jesus was stepping on the scenes, casting out evil spirits. And Christ told us that there will be mockers, there will be scoffers. But he had enough love to still die for the mocker, to still die for the scoffer, for those that ridicule him. He's giving you an option. You can either follow his way or follow your own way. And he said, broad is the way, broad is the way to destruction, narrows the gate to everlasting life. So what Christ says is that no one can inherit this kingdom, the kingdom of God, without being born again of water and spirit. He didn't just say, be born from your mother's womb. That's pretty obvious. We don't have any babies grown out of a laptop <laughs> or a laboratory. No, no, no artificial intelligence, nothing just wild like that. God is saying, yes, the souls of mankind can be redeemed. But the only way you can be redeemed is if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single person is going to have to stand before God, stand before your Creator. And you're going to have to test for everything you said and every, everything you did, even the things you thought. The Bible says that in the end, the motives of the heart will be exposed. So the reality is, even if you're doing stuff in darkness, God says everything will come to light. Mm -hmm. And he calls us to be that light. He says, let your light shine before men. That means he can tell you the truth even when you don't want to hear it. But that's what love is. Love rejoices in the truth. We repeat the scriptures like it's just, you know, old fad. We repeat it for the weddings and, and so forth. Say love is kind. Love is gentle. It's not self-seeking. It, does, it, it doesn't, it rejoices in truth. It doesn't keep records of wrongs. But the reality is most people are far from scriptural love, far from God's love. We have an idea what love is. We have three types of love. There's brotherly love, filial love. But we have the love like we have for our family. And there's a Greek word. It's the love, like uh, romantic love, eros love. Like when you love your spouse or have a relationship with someone. But then there's agape, agape love. This is sacrificial love. This is the love that Christ did 2,000 years ago when he said, I'm going to agape you. I'm going to love you so much. I'm going to love you to the moment where, you, where everything and all the things, all your sins, all your sins are complete, completely being washed away. 
because of his agape love. He's saying this is sacrificial love. This is not, this is love beyond what you do. Most of us, we say we love each other because of how another person treats. But Jesus was smacked in the face. Jesus was beaten, bruised, martyred more than any man. In fact, he became so unrecognizable so that you can have a new identity. He, he lost that identity of what he would look like so that you can have a real identity in him. The only identity is in Christ Jesus. That's why he says, behold, I make all things new. You become a new creation in Christ. You die to your old life and you rise up in the newness of life. And some of us are mocking. But Jesus is making it very clear. He's giving everybody an opportunity to have a relationship. Not religion, relationship. Religious is practices. Saying, if I do these X, Y, and Z, I will have a better outcome in my life. No. Christ is saying you can't do anything but surrender to him. Christ has given us an opportunity now. We have to seek his kingdom first above everything else. Not our own righteousness, not our own will. And many of us, we curse God with our lips. But the moment of our last dying breath, we're asking, God save me, God save me. Don't let it be that. Don't choose God just because you know that your life is fragile in any given moment. You say, well, I don't live by faith. You sure? You do live by faith. You guys hop in the cars and you guys could literally go on the freeway and you believe that the driver next to you is not going to run into you. You don't know if they're drunk. You don't know if they're high. You don't know what they're going on. Do you have enough faith to hop in the car and drive and believe that you're not going to get in an accident? Some of us have so much faith. We, we hop on airplanes all the time and believe that the pilot's not going to crash us. That's a lot of faith right there. You say, well, I don't see it. Well, you don't have to see him. Christ made it very clear. He said, blessed are those that have not seen me, but yet believe in me. So this whole, we need to see is believing stuff, man. Look, I know you guys thought, have thoughts in your mind. I don't see your thoughts, but I know that they're real. So that logic is just wasted. I'm going to have some of my brothers and sisters go preach the word. Who wants to go? Who wants to go? Come on, come on, come on. Sisters? Brothers, man of God, you want to go? Okay. Brother Noah? Come on. Come on, come on. All right, Brother Noah, come on, let's go. Here, let me go get you set up. Yep, 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 yep. Roads. Mic'd up. I'll preach for a little bit faster. Okay. Yeah. It should be all right. Yeah. Amen. Okay. All right. That's cool. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to get this right. No worries. I think I'll do this one. It's better than that. We got some interesting thing going on here. <laughs> okay. That's cool. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I see a lot of people out here today. A lot of people... A lot of people, and it just one thing that, uh, that 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 came to my mind that in the Bible it talks about it's a very broad way to hell. Meaning, a lot of people here. I just want to be straight up with you. You know, we think we're good people, but in reality, we're not good people at all. There's not one good person here on earth, but there's only one good person. It's Jesus Christ. It's the Father that is in heaven. He's the only good person. Hallelujah. But if, if you can hear us, and if anybody needs prayer, anybody that is going through either depression, anxiety, or, or, or they believe that, that, that they have a supernatural power, or they believe that they can receive healing, healing right now, or if anybody needs deliverance, we can, we're able to pray for you. We can pray for you. We have brothers and sisters here that are filled with the Holy Spirit that can pray for you and that you can receive deliverance. You guys, re you guys can receive healing. 
and I believe it in faith that I know there's somebody out here that needs healing, that needs deliverance, that 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 really just needs to know Jesus, that you've been searching for 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 a peace, for for joy, and you can't find it. You know you can't find it in the drugs. You know you can't find it, and 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 and. In the bed sheets, you know, you can't find it in the music, in the movies, and the even in the food, because every time we eat, we take a meal, we grab a bite. It's a temporary fulfillment, exactly, because just like the next following day, we want that same fulfilling. We want to eat a a, a a a chicken sandwich or or a burger or a burrito, but it's a it's a feeling. It's a temporary feeling that fulfills us. But I'm telling you right now, there's only one fulfillment that can fulfill that can fulfill that can really fulfill your 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 body, your your soul, and it's Jesus Christ. It's His love. It's 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 no, it's getting to know Him. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. And so, that's the really only fulfillment that you really need. The only joy that you really need is from God, and God can give that to you. See, I used to live with a bunch of anger in me. Anger. I was always angry. I was mad at the world. I've lived in a, in a state of mind where it was just me against the world. Hallelujah. And so God delivered me from the anger. God delivered me from a lot of things. He delivered me from, 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 from what I thought that was fulfilling. And it, and, and it surely wasn't. Once I met Jesus Christ, once I really gave my life to him, once I really, really built a relationship with God. And you see, God can deliver you guys. God can, can heal you guys. If anybody is sick, if anybody that, 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 has a fam, that has a family member and that is sick, or, you know, maybe uh, you need, you, know, you have some uh, uh, emotional or, or maybe somebody here has sleep paralysis or so forth or so on, you can receive healing. Our God, Jesus Christ, He works in a mysterious way. His, He, He. Th this is why we have testimonies because there's miracles. There's these supernatural miracles that go forward, and 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 believe me, we have testimonies here. And so I pray, I pray that you guys truly open your guys' ear, open your guys' mind, and hear the good news. Is that Jesus Christ, when when He created us, see what happened is that we choose things in our own way we, we we disobey god and so what happened was that when adam and eve then when they disobeyed god there was sin and sin was created right that's why that's why people here are, are, are always angry they're, they're always stressed there's anxiety there's fear that's a big one fear there's pride uh lgbtwx pride there's pride right so what happens is that we created sin and now sin it, what happens is that it it breaks this relationship that we once had with God that He created, Hallelujah. But we break it just like a relationship, right? We break that relationship. We disobey our Father, and so and so, what happens that God came down, Jesus came down humbly to to take His own life so that you can have life. He's the one that became sin even though he was sinless. And so that's why Jesus died on the cross for you. And he knew every single one of you guys. He know every single one of you guys. And he's calling you guys to repent. He's calling you guys right now to repent for the kingdom of God is at near. Meaning God is coming back very soon. And, 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 and we will be glorified, but right now he is being glorified, hallelujah, because of, for what he did on that cross for us. For us, everybody else is dead, but Jesus Christ. All the other false prophets, all the other so-called Muhammad and, and and Buddha and so forth and so on, they're all dead. But Jesus Christ is alive and He's moving, and I can and we can testify that in the mighty name of Jesus. And so God wants you, everybody here, to repent, to become born again in His name. And He really, truly wants everybody here to become disciples of Jesus Christ, not just so-called Christians, because there's a lot of lukewarm Christians, and we're here to call out the hidden sins in the mighty name of Jesus. We're here to call out that, 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 that hidden sin in the mighty name of Jesus. We, God has called everybody to repent. 
to change your way, to, to have that conviction, because it's that sin that leads us to hell. It's that sin that leads us to eternal death. But God wants to give you guys that living water. He wants you guys, he wants you guys to receive that living water so that you can have life. And so I pray that truly that this really reached somebody. And like I said, if anybody that needs healing, anybody that needs deliverance, anybody just even wants to know who really Jesus Christ is, please just come forward, receive the, receive even a prayer, receive, receive, receive the word, receive the bread of life, receive Jesus into your life. Amen. 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 Goes that way. All right. So you can just read it back or just feel like I'm Okay. If you want to do that, if you feel we're reading that, then, but it's fine. It's it's usually pretty good. Yeah, you might, might. Just real quick. So you can just like clip these on like that. Okay. Yeah, however okay. you want to fit it. You know, yeah. Anywhere where it sticks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Does that work? Grab that. Oh, does this work? No, yeah, just there's two of them. Oh, okay. One's for live and one's for like our better recording. Hello? No, Hello? no, you gotta, oh, you gotta, you gotta like... put that on too. Yeah. Oh, sorry. both of them? I don't know. Yeah, oh, sorry. okay. <laughs> Double pocket. Right. Okay. Okay, just one more. That's all. Probably put it. I don't know. You just, okay. Just let the Lord use it. Okay. Okay. Alright, and then I'll go like this. Alright. All right. Um, you good, you're good. So if anyone needs prayer, come over here. We're, we're here, out here for prayer. And anyone needs prayer for healing, deliverance, or just have questions about um, our faith. Um, so God and man, we had a relationship with God from the beginning of creation. Um, so the problem with our, what had happened with our relationship with God is our sin broke our relationship with God when we followed our way instead of God's way. We had all, we all have sinned, um, and late, and like stolen, disobedient, God broke his law and was punished. Uh, punishment of sin is death. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. Huh? I'm too nervous. Oh, no, no, no. You, you can you you share the testimony. You don't have to read okay. Share what the Lord did to Whatever in your Lord, life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then you can just put that closer to <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the Lord You're did for you, you can share. Okay. Okay. So you um, comfortable. I'm comfortable yeah. to share. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if anyone needs healing or prayer and anyone's struggling in their life with anything, you know, relationships or if you have issues with your family or financial, um, I'm going to tell you right now, God has provided for me financially um, in a situation where I was wondering how I was going to make, you know, make a day to day, make a day to day, you know, with my job and with even with school, God can provide for you. If you're, you're worried about your finances, if you're worried about any situation, you're stressed out, you feel heaviness, come over here. God has an answer for you. God has a God has healing for you. God, God loves you. The God that you uh, there's a God who loves you that is better than the love that the world provides. Come here and get your prayer. Come speak to us about like ask us questions and um, we're here to help you. We're here to pray for you. We want to share our faith with you. Um, if you need deliverance, you need healing, you need prayer for a family member, for friends, speak with us. We're here to pray for you. Amen, sister. Praise God. Okay. Amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> no, what that was beautiful. The Bible says, uh, how, what, beautiful are the feet of those that preach the good news. Amen. I'm not checking right now, but I just trust the word. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see one of the brothers here. Come on. Who wants, who wants to go? Oh, Jacob. Oh, Jacob. Can you bless this? No. He's like, I'm good. He can't hold it. <laughs> He'd be like, I got that one. Is your hand okay? Let's see. Here. You got you know how to put everything on? Okay, cool. 
These are working? Yeah, it's all okay. Yeah, everything's working. Yeah. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, like my brothers and sisters said before, um, if anyone needs prayer for anything, one of us would uh, be, be happy to, to, to pray for you. Um, whatever it is in your life, you know, just, just, just give it to Jesus. And, you know, you, you, you may be thinking, you know, God ain't real. Jesus ain't alive, but let me tell you, he is. Just give him a chance. And, and those of you that, that gave church a, a, a chance in the past, you know, I just want you to know that the church ain't Jesus. See, a, a lot of us have been hurt by the church in the past. I, I know I have. But the thing is, is, is Jesus doesn't let you down like the church, church does. People will always let you down. And that's just what it is. is this, this, this life, the, the, the things in this life, the, the people, they'll, they'll always let you down. You know, I, I thought that that, that me being in, in a relationship with someone, that that, that, that was going to fulfill me. But it didn't because she wanted to use me. I thought that playing baseball and, you know, being in sports and doing this and, and getting a bunch of money, that, that, that that would fulfill me. But let me tell you again, I was wrong. See, it's not till, see, I've had Jesus in my life, uh, an idea of him, always. I, I grew up in church. I, I'd go pretty much every Sunday. But God was never my God. You know, I, I just went and attended church because mom told me to straight up and with you know a broken home my, my mom and dad separated when I was young my, my dad I'd, I'd spend the week with him and it'd be living one way and then with my mom it'd be living a completely different way and you know thinking that going to church on Sunday was enough but when Jesus account encountered me not too long ago, about a year ago, he really, he really pressed reset on my life, and I, I was, it was a night where I was going to a movie, and just my uncle invited me to a movie, and when we went to this movie, it was called Come Out in Jesus' Name, it was a very, very powerful movie, it's about prayer, deliverance, really living for God and doing and, and walking in the supernatural because this life, this life is, is not just physical, it's also spiritual. And the spiritual is honestly more important because our, our bodies, we know the physical will, once, will one day die away. Our, our bodies are not forever. We know that didn't, you know, there's a saying, you know, death and taxes are, are guaranteed or something like that. I don't know, I'm paraphrasing. But you know that death is, is, is around the corner. It's knocking, you know, it's, it's going to take you. But the thing is, is we know that we have a soul. Where is your soul going to go? At the end of the day, where is your soul going to go? And to be honest with you, is in the beginning, we had a perfect relationship with our Creator. 
Everything was perfect, no murder, no stealing, no cheating. God bless you, hallelujah. And once we did it our way, sin entered into the world, evil entered into the world. And when evil entered into the world, that's what led to our brokenness. The sin that is in our lives, the evil that is in our lives, led to our brokenness. And that's what I tried to fulfill. I tried to fulfill it in many other things. Money, you know, my, my sports career, my, my academics, relationships, but it couldn't fulfill it. And that's why I said, you know what, Lord? I've always really, you know, known about you, but I'm going to give you a try. I'm, I'm going to give you one more try. And when Jesus came into my life that night, you know, I wasn't Holy Spirit filled that night. A lot of people think, you know, you think uh, you accept Jesus into your heart, claim him as Lord, you have the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, that's, that's wrong. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that and see. But I had repented. And that's the first step is repentance. And repentance is not saying, Lord, I sinned against you. I, I've committed evil. I, I acknowledge that I am not as good of a person that I think I am. And in sinning again, it is truly turning away from your old ways, your old habits. Whatever the old in your life is, whether it be you know, drinking alcohol, whatever the old man was, it's saying, I'm going to turn away from it. That's the first step is repentance. The second step to become born again, because that's what Jesus calls us to be. If we want to get into the kingdom of heaven, it's, he calls us to become born again. The second step, is then become baptized. The first baptism is of water that he talks about. He says you must become baptized of water and spirit. And that's in John 3. You can go look it up. When you get baptized in water, the Bible says that when you become, uh, when you get baptized, that you die down in that water. Old things have passed and you rise up as a new creation in Christ. You truly are a new person when you become baptized into the water, when you're baptized into the name of Jesus Christ. But the, a lot of us, don't understand that spiritual reality. And the thing is, is a lot of us don't have the ability to live holy because we don't have the Holy Ghost. And that's the second baptism. What second baptism? Yes, I thought there was only one baptism. Yes. No, no, no. The Bible says baptisms, plural. Yes. So see, the second baptism is of the Holy Spirit. He says, become born again of water and spirit. See, you can't live a holy life without the Holy Spirit because the rest of the spirits in the world are sinful. <laughs> and see, we're walking around and we're living with those sinful spirits and we're thinking, you know, some of us don't even care that we, that we hurt God. Some of us care, but we're like, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm just going to be a sinner for the rest of my life. No, that's not what the Bible says. Hallelujah. There is a chance to actually become born again to actually not have to go and sin ever again to not start to stop feeling the guilt every single time that you go and sin yes. see i was living in a repetitive cycle of guilt and shame and hallelujah jesus jesus broke that off of my life that's why i can come on the mic right now i don't have to feel nervous i can be joyful Man, I was depressed, like, bad. But Jesus took that away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See? And I ask, you know, if you really have that Holy Spirit, that there will be evidence. And the evidence is, you know, he says, you know, that they will prophesy, that they will speak in tongues, that they will heal this, lay the hands on the sick and they will recover. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. See, we'll cast out demons. Hallelujah. 
So you have, have you ever seen the supernatural really be moved? See, no, we live too much in a superficial world. We too, live so much in a physical world. But the thing is, is the spiritual world is more real than the physical world. And with that being said, is what, what is going to happen with your soul? What is going to happen? Be honest with yourself. Do you think the life that you're living right now, that you're going to go heaven or hell? Honestly, be honest with yourself. You know, some of you might think that you're a good person. You, you think you're being honest with yourself. And honestly, that's what you think. That's your standard. Honestly, by my standard, you'd probably be a good person too. But the thing is, is we're not measured up to my standard. I'm not going to be the judge on the final day. I will not be the judge on Judgment Day. You will not be the judge of yourself on Judgment Day. Hallelujah. Your sister, your brother, your mama, your daddy, they ain't going to be the judge on Judgment Day. The Father is going to be the judge on Judgment Day. And see, he already kind of gave you a, a cheat sheet. He said the answers are already there. You just got to take the test and, oh, do the actual right answer. Like, live it out. He told you to become born again. Then why aren't you becoming born again? You say, I don't need to be baptized. That's not what the Bible says. See, we think that we're good people, but we've all stolen. We've all lied. We've all cheated people. You know, some of us have murdered and, you know, others, we've hated people, right? I think almost everyone's hated someone in their life with a true passion of, of hatred, you know? The Bible says that hatred is as murder. If you hated someone, you've murdered them at the heart because the first murderer, Cain, killed his brother Abel. And it's because Cain hated his brother that he committed it. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way. And see, Hallelujah. 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 See, the faith, the faith that we have is also demonstrated by the works. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way right now. See, a lot of us think that, you know, a lot of us when, when eulogies are given, you know, when when funerals happen, why do we always think that the person's going to end up in a, in a better place? Seriously. So we all know that there's a soul. But the thing is, is we, we lie to it, our, ourselves and say, oh, what we've done is enough. No, what you've done isn't enough. It'll never be enough. You already sinned once. There is the only payment for that that's worthy is Jesus. Jesus' perfect life that he lived, the death of his life that pays for your sins, which the wages of sin is death. Not, a physical, not just a physical death, but also a spiritual death. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hey, do you want, do you want to get on the mic? You want to go? Or I can see, keep talking. All right. Hallelujah. See, the response is, is Jesus. And then the response, Jesus calls us, Jesus is the answer. And Jesus also calls us to respond to him. See, Jesus can't just be your savior. He also has to be your Lord. And when someone is, is Lord over your life, the, the, it's like a, a, a teacher, right? He was called the good teacher, right? 
in the student. Is the student greater than the teacher? No, They're, the student is learning from the teacher. When someone is Lord over your life, you obey them. You, you do what they say because to be honest with you, you know that that person knows better than you. That's why when we're, you know, your, your dad told you as a kid, don't run into the street. Is it because that he wants to be an overbearing parent and just not let you do whatever you want to do? Or no, is there danger in the street? No, there's danger in the street. That's why your dad told you not to run in the street as a kid. And that's why the Lord's saying, there's danger over there. The way you're living is dangerous. There's hellfire over there. And you know, I don't like talking about like this, but straight up, there's hellfire where, the way you're living right now. The way you're going ain't the right way. And God's saying, look, I've given you a better way. You can turn your life 180 and then start walking with me. We'll go to a better place. Hallelujah. But the thing is, you have to live right. You have to become born again. You have to do what Jesus said. There is a response. A lot of people don't think there's a response. He has to be Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Not just one or the other. Hallelujah. Like, Lord, have your way. Are you good? Okay, bless you. Amen. 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 Don't run off of those. Oh, yeah. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah, see, the thing is, like, what are they saying on the Hebrew? Here's the bottom line. That just means... <laughs> that just means the highest praise. That's all what hallelujah means. The highest praise because we serve the most high God. Amen? So, yeah. Oh, uh, look at sister. Oh, I'm trying to avoid... Nah. Huh? Nah, I ain't busy. Uh -uh. Nah, you about to do this. In Jesus' name, come on, hit that. Oh hit up. my gosh. Got the new promotion. The pregnant Where one is? looks like she's ready. No, no, no. We got Cece's nails. No, it wasn't Cece's Majesty. Majesty nails. Your Majesty. Majesty's nails. Oh, Majesty nail studio. The Lord, the Lord, bless the sister tremendously. Do we have her robes? Amen. Yeah, the, the, the fire is going. So, yeah, Lord, let the Lord use you. Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, all glory be to Jesus, our true King and Savior, um, our Redeemer. Um, you know, let me see. Hold on. I was kind of co kind of based off of this, right? Um, so today I was actually having a conversation with one of my clients, and um, she was saying how. We all have our own version of God, and you know, um, and it's good, but you know what? It's not good because there's only one God and one true Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. You can make up all these gods in your, in your mind to fit how, what fits your lifestyle, to fit your mindset, to fit your wants and your needs, um, but Jesus tells us to to deny ourselves and to pick up our cross. And we make this life so much about ourselves and we make it so much about our wants and our needs and our desires. Um, but truly, we're here to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're not here to serve ourselves. We're not here to serve our parents. Or actually, we are here to serve others because Christ said to serve others as we serve Him and love others as He loves us. So I encourage you guys to, you know, really think about what it is that you're living this life for. Is it yourself? Is it for your significant other, for your children? Because that, it, it's good, um, it's great and all to have those relationships and to be a parent. I'm a parent, I'm a mother to a two-year-old boy and I love him dearly. But I am a woman of God first, and um, and being a mom isn't going to take me to heaven. It's, it's repenting. It's uh, being born again of water and spirit. And, um, you know, it's time. You know, the Lord is coming, and this is something that's been said for 
many years, but the Lord truly is coming. Whether whether you meet him tonight, whether you don't make it home tonight, or Lord willing, that doesn't happen, but we just don't know our destiny. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. And we keep trying to put off our relationship with Christ as and say, you know, we're too we're too young to live for Christ. We're too young. I, I'm in the midst. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying my life. But you know, you don't you don't know what tomorrow will bring. And tomorrow's not promised. Um, and it's just so important to really, truly live uh, for our maker and to love him and to repent. It's time to repent of our sins. We live in such a wicked world. You look at the news, you know, you, you see what's going on all over the world. The human trafficking, the child trafficking, the murders, the drugs, the overdoses, the broken families. That, that is not of God that there is an enemy at work, There's, they're influencing our minds, they're influencing children, these demons are influ influencing our children, look how wicked this world is, you cannot tell me that there is not a devil at work, you know, there, it is time to just, you know, stop messing around, stop acting like we have all the time in the world, because we don't, we really don't. And I am, ever since I gave my life to the Lord, I stopped becoming a slave to sin. I'm telling you right now, if, if you're drinking, if you're smoking, if you're fornicating, um, you're, you're a slave to your own sin. You know, people think that we have to abide by all these rules and we're a slave to this law. But truthfully, we're free. We're free in Christ. We're no longer bound to these chains of sin. To, to drugs, to alcohol, to relationships, because we get our fulfillment from the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good. And you will only find your true sense in the Lord, not in the things of this world. Because everything in this world is just a dead end. Um, you know, so praise God. He, he, he broke the chains off of me off of my addictions and you know the lord is still working on me hallelujah i'm still a work in progress and i always will be but you know i give god all the glory for for the good the bad the trials the blessings hallelujah. and you know as long as you're obedient to the lord you will see his hand in your life um god is so good and if anyone wants to receive prayer we're here we're open um and we love you we truly love you guys uh, Jesus loves you. He died for you on that cross. He thought of you on that cross. And he just wants you to come home to him. He's, he's waiting for you, arms open. And he will meet you right where you're at. You don't need to clean yourself up and, and wait till you get better. Because the truth is, God does the cleaning up. He cleanses us. He purifies us. Um, and it's a process, and you just got to trust the Lord. So, hallelujah. Praise, praise be to Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You. Don't run off. Don't run off. I need some mics. Oh. <laughs> okay, 5-0. Oh, they tell us to go. They tell us to go. I want to give it to the pregnant We'll give it to the pregnant woman. We'll give it to the pregnant woman. First. Oh, it's Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol. Okay, I need a double-double with no. All right. <laughs> yes, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Lord be to Jesus. You guys need prayer? Anybody need prayer? All right, come on. Hallelujah. We believe in that miracle working power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They'd be like, ain't you supposed to do that at church? Yeah, no, we're supposed to be the church, amen? Hallelujah. Live as the body of Christ. That's what he said. We, we don't just go somewhere. We are something, amen? We live as the body of Christ. The Bible says to live as Christ and to die as gain. Hallelujah. Come on, sister. Get the baby. <laughs> Here, you put on that you want to put on. It's all that good practice. Get the prophets ready. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that too low? Israel. Or? No, that's good. Good. Israel. That man got the middle name? 
Uh, Cisco. I was going to say Samuel. No. no. <laughs> Samuel. No, I mean, hey, you know. Uh, you don't want to do that? It's your first time. Okay. Let the Lord use you. Okay. Are you good? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Okay. Let me ask you a question about. Um, you no, know, we got topics to talk about. I was thinking about the New Age. Why people think they get power from that? It used to be part of New Age, right? Or you said not bit. really in it, mm -hmm. but. You did have crystals or stuff? No? Um, what was it? Tarot cards. Tarot cards, okay. Yeah, tell them tell about how people think they're going to get meaning, girl. People think they're going to get meaning out of tarot cards and rituals. You know what? You need to stay over here, sister. Come on. It's not. It's like the way people drive it. Help me, Lord. All right. Come on, sister. Let the Lord use you. I just felt that because there's a there's a big deception about it, right? Everybody yeah. thinks that they're supposed to get, you know, I don't know. What were you looking for when you were trying to do tarot cards? More like self. Self? Mm -hmm. Okay. Trying to find self. Okay, go for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're out here preaching about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And... First and foremost, I just want to say that the biggest deception there is is out there probably right now is probably, hmm, I would say, witchcraft. And a lot of astrology, the tarot cards, the oracle cards, the any type of card that, that tries to tell you about your future, tries to bring up the past, it definitely is a part of witchcraft. It's not good. It brings... It brings a lot of, it brings, um, it, it, you're opening doors in the spiritual realm. And a lot of people don't realize that, that this is a spiritual reality that we're living in right here, right now. It's not just about the physical that we see, like I see you, you see me. But it really is um, a spiritual battle that we're going through. And... A lot of times through witchcraft, through the tarot cards, through all that, you're trying to look for, for self-gain. You're trying to gain more power. You're trying to, it's almost like you're trying to have a self-awakening. And I just want to say that the self-awakening is, is false. It's not real. Um, that's probably the Lord trying to reach you. That's, that's probably where you're at your weakest point. That's where you're realizing that you truly are depressed, that you truly, um, you truly are trying to seek more, but you just got led the wrong way. And so I'm here to say that I was in, all, uh, I was in the astrology. I considered myself, you know, a Virgo. I tried to, I had like this app that would tell me, all these things like oh you're gonna be so angry today blah 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 the new moon the when the moon comes out all the all these different things that that just it's all it's all deceiving it's all deception and like i said it's gonna open more doors to to honestly what it, it what it is is demons and you know god created he created scene he created the seen world that we see right now, but he also created the unseen world as well. And we are we're fighting a battle against against things that we don't even actually see. And so I'm here to tell you that Christ really truly does want a relationship with you. He doesn't he doesn't want religion. There was never religion in the beginning. He never ever said in the gospels that he was about religion. No, Christ said that he wanted relationship with all of us, that, that it's, it's about love. And I just want to say that, that you, don't have to, you don't have to find yourself, you don't have to identify yourself as, as, a, as a Virgo, as a Taurus, as whatever, whatever these things are, you don't have to identify yourself as that. You can really find yourself in Christ Jesus because he's the one who created us. He's the one who who we were with before the beginning of time.
So, yeah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to Jesus. One of the brothers. Who's Who has not preached yet? Daniel Vasquez. He has preached. Come on. Man of God. Let's say how the Lord is working on you. I ain't going to get on that hand. Hmm. Uh, yeah, what? Oh, yeah, watch out. Somebody put it in. Yeah, I hit it earlier. I stepped on it. Amen. Um, I'm going to talk about families today. The true family, the family of God. A lot of us are born into these families. Some of them broken. Some of them perfect. Some of them here and there. When you become born again, when you become a new creation and you're born into the family of God, you, um, you're you drafted into a new family. You're adopted into a new family. The Bible calls it a royal priesthood. We are heirs in a kingdom now where the governments of this world, the democracies, the different diplomacies have no authority over this kingdom. And as the Bible explains it, when we're drafted in, we're seen as royalty as well. Sons of the Most High God. Not the lowercase God, not the other false gods, but the Most High God. The God that holds all things, holds all creation, holds the universe in His hands. And we now as His children are tasked to move forward the agendas of the King. We're called here to work. We're not just born again and stuck to a chair on Sunday morning. We are called here to work. When you are born again, we have a duty here in this kingdom. We're called to reach the lost souls. We're called to work, to labor. As I was explaining earlier, the family of God is not going to look like your blood family. They're not even going to speak the same language as you because this family is worldwide. This family is, is spread, spread across the whole globe, every corner of this world. And we have people that we don't even know, yet we still speak the same language. We all speak the same language because when we're born again, the Bible says that we speak in diverse tongues. That we're given the ability to prophesy, to heal the sick, to cast out evil spirits. In this new family, let me tell you right now, your blood family will say that you are too much, that you're going overboard, that you're not even part of the family anymore in some cases. Yet we still find our joy in Christ. We find our joy knowing that no matter what, that our King Jesus, our Father in Heaven, and our brothers and sisters here on this earth are all working towards the same goal, towards the same mission. And that is to bring the lost back to where they belong. In the beginning, we all had a relationship with Christ. Adam and Eve had a relationship with God. Because of our sin, because of our disobedience, that relationship was broken. And just like any marriage, any relationship that we try to get into, you have to be faithful. You have to trust that the other person is gonna stay faithful that they're going to work together towards the same goals. The Holy Spirit aligns those goals, those, those motives in our hearts and renews our mind to think like the King thinks. Our eyes no longer see the things of this world as something to strive for. Yet we seek to store our treasures up in heaven where no thief, no decay, no corruption can come in and take what is ours. 
we're in a war here. Just like every kingdom comes under attack, we're under attack too. Only we don't stand down. We are equipped now. We have all the tools that we need. We have our armor. We have our weapons. And we will fight. We will pray. We will heal. We are here to bring the lost sheep home. <laughs> it's funny because back in the day, the sheep that were found, they would have their legs broken so that they wouldn't run away. <laughs> now, we're not as severe as that, but yes, we do tell you the truth. Once you are here, do not get deceived. Do not believe the lies that the devil is going to throw at you, saying you're missing out. You're missing out on these experiences. You're missing out on opportunities to enjoy your best life here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Keep in mind that this life is but a vapor. It's here today, gone tomorrow, gone even in a split second. We're all praying that everyone here gets home safely. We all have someone that loves us dearly that wouldn't even imagine us not coming home tonight. And that's the same thing with our family. We've come into a realization that that the family we're in now, that the family that we're operating with is a family that looks out for each other, that cares for one another. We put aside our differences and we don't take advice from people of this world. If you have friends or family that are struggling with sin, whether it be lying, cheating, drinking, smoking, doing things they shouldn't be doing, and you go to them for advice, what kind of advice do you think you're going to get? The Bible says, look, you know what kind of tree it is because of the fruit that it bears. In the same way, examine our lives. We show the love, we show the peace, but yet we also show the correction. You guys need the truth right now to set you free. The truth does set people free. It just says there is only truth. Christ died for you too. The Lord, he's not, not saying, you know, he desires all of us. He desires all of us in this great family. From the beginning, he, it was his intention that creation as humans are in relationship with him. Now we live in a world that is broken that is full of lies where people don't know what is what people don't know what is truth people are, nowadays are calling bad good and good evil don't believe the, eyes, the lies of the enemy and if you have questions whether it is a lie <laughs> the best selling book in the world the bible lays it out clearly what is right and what is wrong you have questions about marriage there's an explanation there you have question about relationships it's all in there you look up at the sky and the stars and wonder how they got there what they're doing what's what it's all in there too you don't need to be a genius you don't need to be a graduate with five doctorates to see that there is design, that there is specifications to all things. Gravity itself, <laughs> keeping us here instead of floating, falling over. <laughs> all that was specifically designed by a creator. And we as a family of God are here to reach our brothers and our sisters. If your ears can hear this message right now, Search within your heart. Maybe you grew up with parents that talked about God.
But yet, when we got to high school and college, our friends and different different influences derailed us from the path that we were on. It's not too late to turn back, to get back on the right path. Don't do it for your parents. Do it for yourself, because your soul is the one that is going to be judged. You can't call your mom. You can't call your dad. Well, my mom prayed for me. My dad prayed for me. They always kept me in their prayers. Your soul is the one that's going to be judged. And whether you chose to obey, emphasis on the obey part, whether you chose to obey Christ here on this earth will determine whether you get adopted, will, will determine whether you're joined into the family. To be born again of water and spirit, to be baptized in the authority of Jesus Christ, to be washed new, to be washed clean of sin, because with the baptism, it's a spiritual circumcision, it's a cutting away of a, our sinful, sinful nature. Sit quietly in a dark room, sit quietly in your car for five minutes and write down how many crazy thoughts come into your head. That, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're given that power, that authority, that ability. And we begin to see things in a different light. We begin to see things through the lens of our King. We have mind renewal, the things that you used to think about. Dios lo bendiga. Dios lo bendiga. Jesús vino por todos, no por unos. Esa oportunidad se nos da a todos de estar otra vez en familia en relación con Cristo. Nunca fue su intención de Jesús que nos separemos de Él. Pero en cuanto nosotros decidimos de sobre Y fue cuando nuestra relación con Cristo cambió. De la misma manera, si uno está en una relación con su pareja, hacen algo para quebrar, para dañar esa relación, cambia la situación. Ya no hay fe, ya no hay confianza en uno. Pero lo que hizo Jesús, lo que hizo Dios por nosotros es que siempre quiso tener esa relación con nosotros. Y mandó a Jesús para hacer el sacrificio perfecto porque Él nunca cayó en pecado. Él fue el sacrificio que pagó por nuestro pecado. Y aunque unos dicen, Él pagó por mis pecados ahorita y los que voy a cometer. Esa es una mentira del enemigo para que, los, para que hagan ustedes pensar que todavía está bien que peque uno, que uno caiga en pecado. Cuando en realidad, cuando fuimos bautizados, el poder del pecado, esas cadenas que uno tiene, se quebran y somos liberados. Somos de hecho nueva creación y aparte del bautizo de agua, también se nos da el bautizo en el Espíritu Santo. Ese bautizo es el que nos da el poder de vivir la vida santa. Nos da el poder de decirle no al pecado. De decir que no voy a seguir en la misma en el mismo ciclo de pecado. Ya no somos iguales de lo que éramos antes. Bendiciones. God bless you guys. We're here today to pray. 
We're here today to preach. But more importantly, we're here to love on you. If you didn't have not felt the love of Christ, if you have not felt that freedom, if you don't even have the full trust right now, but you feel something in your heart, you hear something in your mind, deep down, as creation, we know that there is more to this life than just dying. Because <laughs> death is an equalizer to us all. We all meet death at one point. That is the only thing in this world that is promised. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that way. Receive Jesus Christ right now. Be baptized in the name of Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And truly walk this walk. You don't know when your last day is going to be. I had a friend. I had a friend who had a full ride scholarship to play soccer at Cal State San Marcos, right down the street. In his freshman year of playing, on New Year's night, he was out at a party. And he fell asleep in the car and he never woke up. That friend had a kind heart a great friend, full of joy, full of life, only 21 years old, 19, I think. And yet, because he was consumed with trying to party and drink something for one night, I can only say that, that if you need to choose Christ, over that drink that put him to sleep for eternity, I know he would choose Christ, everlasting life. God bless you. Stay true to the faith. My heart goes out to that friend and his family because they were expecting him home that night and he never came home. Just as my friend passed away on New Year's unexpectedly, it can happen to anyone here too. Lord Jesus, have your way. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you somebody hold the speaker phone. I got you. Let me pick you up here. Well, whatever is easier. Yeah, I'm just going to go like this. That way it doesn't like hit the beer. <laughs> Boom, you good. Thank you, Jesus. We're out here tonight just to offer prayer for anyone who's needing some healing. Anything you might be going through, that's what we're here for. We just want to talk to you. We want to spread the good news for you. If you've never heard the gospel before, now's your chance. To break it down really easily, it's only five steps. So to start, we had a relationship with God from the beginning of creation. That's Genesis 2, verse 7. It says, The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. So right from the beginning, the Bible tells us we were created from God. We weren't just random space dust that collided and turned into everything that you see around us. Our human bodies alone, you can see how complex we are. This is the most very complex thing in all of creation. It didn't come from nowhere. The problem, though, was sin. The original sin wasn't actually Eve in the garden because she was deceived. 
Adam was the one that was told and he disobeyed. It was his sin that came into the world that we have to deal with now. Romans 3.23, it tells us, everyone sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace, he, he did it through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. So we broke our relationship with God when we followed our own ways instead of God's ways. We've all sinned, we've all lied, we've all stolen, we've all disobeyed God. We've all broke his laws and it's death. Now Romans 6, 23 it tells us God is eternal life our Lord. In world, but we're called not to stay in that brokenness. We're called to be brought out of it. This is the way out of that. 1 John 2, 15. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Craving for everything we see and pride in this world. Along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what the Father pleases forever. The answer, though, is Jesus. He lived a sinless life. He took our punishment. He died on the cross to save us from our sins. Not for us to stay in them. He overcame sin and death and rose to life. He went to heaven and God sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. Jesus restores the relationship we lost with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, starting at 15. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and who raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So because of his sacrifice, that now requires a response from us. The response is to become born again. The response is to be repented of your sins, to turn to God in faith, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit, to live as a new creation in Christ, await Jesus' return to set his eternal kingdom. John verse 3, chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus replied, I assure you no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to the spiritual life. If you've never read the book of Acts, I encourage you to read it. That is the start of the church after Jesus had died, was resurrected, and had ascended back to heaven. Acts 2 38, Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God 
must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away. Lord. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging to his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So I'm here to tell you, be faithful. We didn't come from nothing. We're here for a purpose. We were made in God's image. And with that, we need to acknowledge God, not just stay in our selfish ways, but we need to be selfless. We need to do what he's commanded us to do, which is to serve his kingdom. We need to repent of our sins. We need to stop living just for our own selfish desires. We need to surrender all of that. We need to stop living lukewarm lives thinking that just acknowledging Jesus is enough because it's not. Just having a belief of him is not enough. Just thinking that he is a historical figure that, yes, he died and rose again, that's not enough. He's called us to do more than just believe in him. We are to completely repent. And to think that there's no way to get out of your sins, that's a lie as well. That's a lie from the enemy, from the pits of hell. We're told that we are able to completely come out of our sins. That he gives us a way out every time we have temptation. That we can choose the right way. That we don't have to be victim to our sin any longer. We can walk righteously following the words and the guidance of Jesus. Once you've repented, you must immediately be baptized, not just of water, but of the Holy Spirit. Once the Holy Spirit fills you, you will be given gifts. Jesus has set apart different gifts for different people, but together we all work as one part of the same body. We're able to reach people by teaching them, by evangelizing to them like we're doing now. There are people that will prophesy. There are people that do prophesy. There are people that preach. The church is not just the building. The church is actually the people. Gathering in a building doesn't mean anything if it's not filled with the Holy Spirit. Do your part. Respond to God's calling. Go down in that water, repent for everything you've done, and come out a new man. Live your life spreading seeds and letting everybody else know around you what the good news of the gospel is. Tell your family. Tell your co-workers. Tell random people on the street that you meet. Let them know that Jesus is king. Let them know that they need to turn from their evil ways. That they need to walk in repentance. That they need to be followers of Jesus. And that we no longer have to be in this sin. I pray anyone who's heard these words fills the conviction of Jesus in their hearts right now. If you have any questions about the Bible, about the gospel, if you're needing healing, needing prayer for anything, physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, come up and talk to us. That's what we're here for. We just want you to know that we love you. We love you enough to try to save you. That's why we're here spending our time to try to spread Jesus' good news like he's told us to. We want you to be brought into the kingdom as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, let his word go forward. Amen. 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 Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Brother Justin. Accuracy. Amen. Definitely, he was getting the word like right on point. Amen. Hallelujah. The them scriptures are just flowing. In Jesus' name. All right, here, oh. let me get this one. So. What the? What's going on here? Okay. <laughs> All right, here, let's put this down. Hold on. I think it's going to an angle, right? Is that your, some people like this. All right. Praise God. Okay. Who wants to hold oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Yes, I'm alive today because of Jesus himself. Thank you, Lord. I was suicidal, depressed, angry, alone, isolated, rejected. But God never rejected me. He gave me an opportunity to live. Hallelujah. He gave me an opportunity to be set free from my addictions, set free from my depression, set free from my anger. Because God is so good. He's merciful that his grace saves me. Not so that I could abuse it and live a life filled with sin and live a life against him in disobedience. But to live a life according to his will because he loves me so much. He made me in his image. And the reality is that we're young people because I'm young too. And all I wanted was to live for the world and live for myself and have self gain. To be better than anyone that was around me because of uh, insecurities or whatever it might have been. But the reality is God saying that you could be secure in me, that you could be in my hiding place, that you could take refuge in me, and I will never let you go because his love is so deep. His love is so deep that he spread his arms for us to die on the cross, to overcome sin and death. The Bible says that Jesus went through every temptation that man could ever think of, every temptation that you've gone through, any pressure and moment that you went through, Christ went through it. But the beautiful thing is that Christ overcame. He overcame the sin that you couldn't overcome. And now since Christ died and resurrected, you too could die and resurrect. That you don't have to live in your sin. You don't have to live in brokenness. <laughs> and God is so beautiful. God is so beautiful that He died for the mockers. He died for those who abused him. He died for those who whipped him. He died for those who lived a life filled with sin. So the truth is this, is that Christ says, if you love me, you follow my commands, that you become born again, that you repent of your sin, that you don't look like the world no more. The Bible says when you become with God, when you be joined with him, you divorce of the world. The Bible says that he's called you to be washed away, set clean. Because those who have their garments filled, that are filled with sin, that are stained, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who live a life disobedient to Jesus, the Bible says that His wrath will remain on you. But God is giving you an opportunity right now for those who are hearing this message, God, that God wants to open up your heart and mind, and He wants you to be alive. Because the reality is that we're all dead. We're dead in our, and spiritually. Because the sin in our life is cancer. And it's killing us day by day. And we don't recognize it. But that's why you go to the doctor to get checked up. To see if anything is wrong with you. But I tell you today that this is the day. This is your, this is your appointment. And this appointment is to show you that you've lied. You've stolen. You've lusted. You made your own idols. You made yourself God before God Almighty in heaven. The one who sits on the throne. The one who created you in His image to have relationship, to be one with Him. And that's why God is saying, come back to me. Stop living in your sin. Stop living as a prostitute, selling yourself short. Don't you know I died for you? Don't you know I gave up my life for you? Don't you know I suffered for you? Just so I could be with you, so that you could be with me? So God is knocking at your door today saying, open it up to me, child. Don't be a child of wickedness. Be a child of God. Don't be a child of the devil. Be a child of God because that's what He created you for. It doesn't matter what you're going through, what age you're at. You might say that I'm young. I have a lot of time to live. But the truth is that you could die tomorrow. You could die right now. Tomorrow is never promised. So the reality is that you want to wake up from the slumber this identity crisis. A lot of us, we look in uh, different places to find love and joy. We look at astrology. We look in witchcraft. We look at tarot cards because we want to know what our future lies. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But the reality is that God knows your plans. The Bible says that He has plans to prosper. He wants to establish your footsteps for those who are righteous and live in holiness. And for me, I was living a life filled with sin. And the gospel was brought to me multiple times, but I rejected it because I loved my sin. I was young, 
and I thought I was supposed to live like everyone else. But the reality is I never felt the same like everyone else. I felt different, which is a beautiful thing to feel. Because God doesn't call you to be like the world. He calls you to be different, to be set apart. And Jesus came into this world preaching the gospel, saying, repent, turn away from your sin, turn away from what's killing you, not just physically, but spiritually. Because the reality is that not everyone goes to heaven. Not everyone gets to be in his home. Because the reality is that if you, if a stranger came to your house and you don't know him, the reality is that you would not open the doors for him because you never knew that person. And the truth is that when you live in sin, you become unrecognizable to God. That when you face him, he will say, I never knew you. Those who take part in iniquity, those who take part in sin, those who continue going back to the vomit, those who continue going back to the mud. God is saying, get out of that situation, get out of that relationship, get out, get out of that addiction. Come to me, all who are weary, who carry heavy burdens. God is saying, come to me and I will give you rest. That is never too late. But the reality is that you want to do it today. The Word of God says today is a day of salvation. Today is a day to repent. Today is a day to surrender. You only become victorious when you surrender to the Lord Jesus. You only become victorious when you give Him your life. To live, to live is Christ and to die is gain. The Bible says to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. But when you become present with the Lord, you want to know for sure that you know Him and He knows you. You want to know for sure that you're going to inherit this kingdom of God. You don't want to be in the presence of God with wrath remaining on you because you prefer to lust after that thing or to lust after that person, to idolize things, to live a life of sin. And you might say that I'm, I'm a good person. I don't sell drugs. I don't rob people. I don't kill no one. I'm better than a lot of people. But the reality is that God is holy. And with the holy God, when you break one law, you break them all. And I pray that this message is hitting your heart, touching your soul. Because for me, it took years to turn to the Lord Jesus. But I was broken and I was breaking myself over and over and over. And I thought that the that the alcohol will fix it. I thought that the marijuana would fix it. I thought that these relationships would fix it. But the reality is that the first love is Jesus Christ. You guys have been turning to other relationships, other guys and, and other ladies, and you think that they love you, that you think you love them. But the reality is this, is that Christ is the first love that you need, the one who remains faithful when everyone else cheats on you. Because in my life, I've cheated and I lived being rejected by that as well. And I told myself, how can I ever forgive someone that's unfaithful, that hurts, that causes pain to my body, causes pain to my heart? And God spoke to me. He says, you've been cheating on me this whole time. But the reality is I'm giving you this chance. I'm still having my arms open for you, that you may turn to me and turn away from your sin. The depression, the anxiety, the stress, it comes from your sin. It comes from the things that you do, that you think give you pleasure. But the pleasure of sin is so temporary. It's like a quick fix. You turn, you're, you're broken, you're sad, you turn to your sin, you feel pleasurable for one second, and then you become depressed, you become angry again. But God is saying that when you come to me, the eternal God, the living God, God is saying that I will give you eternal peace. I will give you eternal joy. I will give you eternal hope. And if you guys are losing hope, I tell you today that the hope that you need is in Christ Jesus. God doesn't want you to be yoked to the wrong person. God wants you to be yoked to Him. You think that relationships was meant for people, and it was, but it was truly meant for you and God. You were truly called to be yoked with Him, to become one with Him. But in every relationship, you're called to be faithful. And if not, there's consequences. If not, there's divorce. 
their separation. But God is saying for those who are in me, those who repent, those who become born again, those who I call my, my daughter, my son, the word of God says that heaven, that no angel, that no demon, that nothing could ever separate you from the love of God. But God says he detests the wicked. Are you living in wickedness? Are you living in sin against God? The truth is that you are. But God is saying, turn away th from that path that leads to destruction and turn to me. You think you're young. You think you have multiple opportunities. But your life is like a vapor. God is protecting you for so, for so long. And you say that what well, God's been saying, he's coming back. But God is saying that he's been patient, giving you guys opportunity day by day. But if you guys don't take this opportunity, the reality is that you will be headed to hell by your own choice, not the choice of God. God gave you a, an opportunity, but you took advantage. You spit at his face and you turned away from him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for saving the lost souls, Lord. We're all lost, but we could be found in Christ Jesus. And I pray that it opens up your mind that you realize that you are in jeopardy, that your soul is in jeopardy because this life is temporary, but where your soul and where your spirit goes is eternal. And God is saying, make that right choice. You don't got to choose what everyone else is choosing. You don't got to look like the world. You could choose me and you could find true love in me. You could find true peace in me because God is your answer to all your problems. And there's no situation, there's no circumstance that is bigger than God. God will destroy every situation you're going through. He will save you. But don't just make Jesus your Savior, make Him your Lord as well. Following Him day by day, crucifying your flesh and living a life for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, all right. I will wait. What do you call y'all supposed to clap? <laughs> what was that about? Okay. Hey, Jesus, the real Lamb of God. <laughs> he said, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Christ is the true Lamb. <laughs> the reality is, He's coming back as a lion. The Lion of Judah. Thank you, Lord. He's coming back Hallelujah. with the sword. He's coming back as king. He sacrificed himself so that you can have life and life more abundantly. But there's also one, an evil one, that you can't see. Thank you, Lord. The deceiver of the brethren. The Satan. You know him as the devil. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. He has the ability to influence the minds of people and move on the hearts of those that disobey God, that have rage against God. You may think that your rage has come from one place. Satan has set, set things into motion. He's the God of this world blinding the minds of those that refuse to obey Jesus Christ. Don't be deceived. Don't mock God. The Bible says God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall also reap. So if you sow this life living for yourself, you're going to get death, decay, punishment. God is a just... God. But if you sow into the Spirit, you'll reap everlasting life and peace. And Christ wants us to know that the only way to be a part of His kingdom, the only way to be a part of His family is to be born again. And so we pray in the name of Jesus. Bless you.
Pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you get your heart right today, that you focus on God, focus on who He is, the true Jesus, the historical Jesus, the Jesus that saves you from your sins, not for you to stay in them. He's Christ. He's King. As the Word says, <laughs> let our King come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you guys. All right. Bless you guys all there out there in YouTube land. We are here, New Creation in Christ Ministries, New Creation in Christ Church, because in Christ we are what? New Creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to get the timing on that next time. <laughs> Anyways, you guys be blessed in Jesus' name. We'll be out here, uh, and we're going to do our pop-up revival in a week. So for some of you guys out there in San Marcos, I believe we're going to be at Sunset Park. We're going to be doing a pop-up revival. But, um, but yeah, we're going to be out there. You guys keep us in prayer. Sow into the ministry. New Creation in Christ ministry. Subscribe, like, send this off. We're out here. The Bible says that there's nothing wrong with the harvest, amen? Nothing wrong with the harvest. But it's the laborers that are few. So it says, pray to God that he sends laborers to the harvest. This is the harvest here. Every soul here, you guys, are getting an opportunity to get your hearts right with God. Yes, he gives you free will, either to accept them or reject them. And it's on you. Make the right choice. Choose God. Choose Jesus Christ. Blessings.